Frail Fragment is a music podcast, but we talk about movies, entertainment, sports, whatever's on our mind, open stream of consciousness, in awareness, and make things, making it a little comical on the side. Frail Fragments, Monster Classics. Hey, bruh. What's up, buddy? How are you? Oh, not a day, not a dollar. We got a, we got a pretty cool guest today. Do we? Yeah, and his name's Sean Walt. Um, I mean, we'll get, we'll get into it during the interview. I'm just going to uh, send in the, the, the info link. now. It's just so, yeah. Just give me a second. Why not? It should be this. It should be this one. Yeah, so, uh, this is a cool cat, um, I haven't spoken to him, like, uh, like, you know, voice to voice in, probably, since probably 2012 or something like that, so it's a pretty nice, uh, reunion, you know what I mean? He's an acquaintance. Yeah, he's an, he's definitely a musical acquaintance, uh, over the last, like, frail fragments, uh, career, anyway. Like, uh, we started. Pro- we started in probably 2005, and yeah, we met him probably in 2008, and he just really, really impressed me, right? So. Okay. Yeah. How have you been, man? How have you been since we last talked? Good, good. good weekend. Watch the UFC. Yeah. Rikus. Uh My yeah, dude. I don't know about that, bro. Wow. It was a split I, he, Come on. He he won because of the, the takedowns. Okay. I think uh, Sean's yeah. here now. Oh. Hey man, what's going on? Not hey. much, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh long time. Uh welcome to the monster closet. Uh I really I wanna say thank you for doing this and kind of just kind of going with the flow. Well, I I I'm oh. going to get along with for the most part, Len. You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, just uh, going to give a quick little introduction. It's Monday, January 22nd, 2024. This is Monster Closet episode 19. So we weren't even at episode 20. It's 19. Yeah. Uh, our guest today is a special guy, Sean Walt, Peter Burl's own, the world's own, one of the best singers I've ever heard. Um, you know, so it's it's pretty, pretty sick. Uh, do you remember how we met, Sean? Um, I'm trying to remember for sure. It, it was, I know it was, I'm pretty sure it was online. I'm not sure if it was it through MySpace. I have, yeah, maybe. Is okay. So, my whole thing was, I'm probably wrong too. I'm try, trying to remember, but it was around 2008. Yeah. Um, we we played in Peterborough uh, yeah. with Lee App with Lee Appleby. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I think I think you were at the spill. And you watched us play. That could be wrong, but I mean, then we started talking and we wanted to like start throwing some fucking real shows. And we played the Montre- we played the Montreal House a bunch of times, and we threw some kick ass shows. Like for all fragment, when we'd go to Peterborough, um, we'd we'd book like a hotel room like that. Peterborough was uh, our favorite place to play. I love the people there. They're kind of like a Quartha Lakes mentality, where they're like very hospitable. And uh, they really liked kind of the music we were playing, and uh, I, yeah, man, uh, Sleep Behind the Flame were like some of the band members there were from Peterborough as well, and I think you did suggest a Sleep Behind the Flame, and their bass player Anthony um, now plays as a guitarist and a keyboardist in a band called Star Beast, and we're kind of touring with Star Beast, so it's kind of cool how it all kind of works in. And then I booked Robin from uh, Birdie. Well, I, I booked Birdie, rather, um, at the Bovine for Halloween um, because a buddy's band, the Android Meme, suggested Birdie. And then Birdie, I found out, was working with you. And now we're going to try to book a show on the 22nd in Peterborough at the Urban. And Robin's saying, if we can't get the Urban, then let's do the Atria. I don't know if you're down with that. But 
let's definitely make something happen uh, G- Saturday, June twenty second, and bring it kind of full circle. It- it's only been what since like fucking fifteen years since we last kind of saw each other, right? Well, I know. Honestly, though, I mean, to be fair, I, I'm just starting a new thing. So when we were doing all those shows before, that was all Fatal Assembly, right? Yeah. So, I mean, and now you got really, Fair, Farewell Radio. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're kind of working with at this point. Um, and hopefully, there's not another band called that at this point because we've been pretty good with trying to figure out, you know. What, what name we can use and not be infringing on somebody. We don't want to be Farewell Radio X. So Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, you know, but, but that being said, yeah, Farewell Radio, um, uh, four-piece. I'm on acoustic guitar and vocals. Um, yep. I got a, a lead guitarist um, who's basically taking up the majority of the, the guitar duties. Uh, that's uh, – uh, Jeremy Avey, he's uh, previously from uh, Coma After Crash, which is like a post-hardcore band. Um, okay. nice. I've got, uh, Matt, Matt Leager on bass and backing vocals, and uh, he was previously uh, as California Kilowatt. I guess he was on Universal Records for a little bit. And nice. then, yeah, and then we've been kind of playing around with drummers. We had a new guy out last night. Um, he was previously the drummer from Coma After Crash. I never got his last name. His first name is Andrew, and it's kind of funny. Um, he's the second Andrew we've had as a drummer out in two weeks. So uh, initially we were calling him Andrew 2.0, um, but he came out with two hours notice and like railed it, and like it wow. was shocking. And we're playing you- like and we, we're playing Cochise. Right? Okay, so nice. Yeah, yeah. Bernard Wilkes drums to yeah. the nut, like fucking bang nice. on the money, no issue, on two hours notice. So, yeah, you guys must nail that though, man. Because I, I mean, for me, like, that, like uh, Chris Cornell is my guy, right? So, yeah, yeah he's the, the voice of a generation and the soundtrack of my life, man. So, absolutely. yeah, so. I've probably heard about a thousand singers like just playing shows forever and you're in my top like five I would say for like the thousands of fucking people I've heard sing but dude I can't remember the other four singers like I don't know who they are I don't know I know there were people that were amazing and everything like but you're one of those five and you're the only name I can fucking remember so I mean you really gotta uh check out Farewell Radio and we're gonna you know, be playing with them on June twenty second, uh, yeah. either in Peterborough or in Oshawa, maybe I don't know, but uh, we got to make something happen with the urban. Um, well, I'm gonna way, I'm gonna contact them today. What's that? Yeah. Either way, we're good to go for it, and and I'm gonna walk in there this week and have a chat with somebody. I don't know if anybody will be there, but I'm gonna go and have. I think it's Belinda. I think Is it's it Belinda. Belinda. She's yeah, she's like the talent buyer. I'll give you her 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 info. Cool. And uh, yeah, I just, yeah, for sure. (laughs) Thanks, man. Thanks, man. It helps when you have, it helps when you have a guy like there, you know? Well, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, yeah. And I've got a guy where you are, you're in TO and Robin's in Oshawa. So it makes things a little bit easier in the long run of being able to like network. But for sure, buddy, for sure. Anything you need, man. uh, If I can help you, I'll help you. And because I, you know, you guys are, you guys, you're an awesome singer, musician. You work hard. Uh, you know, you're a grinder, and I love seeing. Like, I, I'm always watching you, man. Like throughout the throughout the years, you know, I, I see that you're you know you're playing bars and you're doing your thing. And um, I don't know. I don't. I I think if there's, I think if we have, if I'm not what? an interview rock star, dude. I'm just I'm playing music because I like playing music and I like the 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 joy of getting on stage and having other people sing the songs with me and having a good time and, and making, and making music for the sake of making music, not to make money, just to make music and to make art and have fun with it and have a good time. It's too much hate. I'm in, be happy. I, I, I'm in it for that, that same reason, but I, I really do feel that um, like if anybody deserves to get money, why, why shouldn't you get money? You know, like I'm you're, you're, ju- you're, 
I'm not yeah. saying not to show me the money. I'm just saying that I'm not in it for the money. If the money happens, rock and roll. Let's do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the right attitude, right? Because if you're chasing the money, you'll never be happy. Yeah, fuck that. Life's you know? too short to chase money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got a family and stuff, too. So you're a family guy like me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, uh, I got a six-year-old now and a four-year-old. A uh, girl six, turning seven, going on twenty one, and then my son, he just turned four in November, and it's really it's really nice having a family and everything. It kind of keeps you grounded, gives you like this this solid purpose. You know what I mean? Like you're like I'm like kind of Len two point oh now, um, and I and I just have to balance uh, because I become obsessive over shit, so I gotta like really check in with myself and have a you know, a balance with like playing music and, you know, spending time with my family and going back into the money thing. I think everything happens for a reason. Right. So it's like, even though we don't understand what the fuck's happening, it's like all part of something greater than, than, than everything. Right. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah it, uh, absolutely. And I mean, <laughs> And being a family guy, absolutely. Well, that's part of the reason why kind of Fatal kind of stopped and I stopped kind of pursuing the the big band thing, right? Like I I, I got married. I, I've been married to my wife for eight years. We've been together for 10. We have a six-year-old. Um, my other kid who has moved in with me as of June of last year, full-time, um, done living at the other side. So... Like when you say you're Len 2.0 at this point, I'm like <laughs> Sean, like 9.7931, way down an update to 10. Like, yeah, um, you're like ba you're, you're battle tested emotionally and physically, right? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I fucking play the long game, brother. You gotta, like, it's the only way to do it. If you don't play the long game, like, it's, it's never done. So you just fucking keep going with it. The wife makes the joke all the time. Well, you know, the holidays are over. Things will slow down now that it's January. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. So, hey, no. is Farewell Radio in the studio? No, they're not, man. Um, so our, our lead guitarist is actually a Peterborough uh, a police officer. Um, okay. And then our bassist lives in Campbellford. And then our drummer is, well, if he chooses, we, we offered the spot to him. Now it's a question of whether he wants to come and play with us because the guitarist, okay. you know, I'm going to fucking show my age. I don't give a shit. Um, the guitarist is a Peterborough police officer, has been for a couple of years, and he's 15 years younger than me. So, like, right. there's a pretty big age gap. And, and the drummer's the same age, so it's really a question of whether he wants to play with an old singer and an old bassist or and his old buddy playing guitar or whether he's you know whether he's got other things to do but we'll see so but as it yeah. stands no they're not in the studio i wish they were but he's out there being a superhero keep people safe in peterborough so i'm happy with that anyway. that's cool and so you guys are just kind of like writing songs or who writes the songs um so uh we took the song island from a while ago so basically it started out um, so speaking of Birdie, uh, their guitarist, yeah. uh, XV, Xadio Valak. So he's yeah. a buddy of mine and Jer's and he introduced us, uh, probably about four months ago, uh, Birdie's last show here in Peterborough at Urban. And I got up on yeah. stage with them. Jared kind of hung out to see if I could actually do what he said I could do. And I guess he was impressed because afterwards he came <laughs> and started shooting the shit with me. And he was yeah. like, hey, man, we should start something. I was like, sweet. So yeah. I took my acoustic guitar over to his house, and we jammed yeah. out some, like, 90s shit, some, like, uh, Alice in Chains and, and some STP, and just to, to see kind of what we had a feel for. And then I jammed. That's my favorite bands. Yeah, I know. And then, and so, <laughs> and then, so I went and played uh, Island, which is, like, a solo release for me. It's on Spotify, and it's just straight-up acoustic. And he was like, yeah. that's a sick song. We should do something with that. So there is like a little minute long video uh, kicking around when we were looking for a drummer where we were going under the name Rabbit Tooth. It's on TikTok and shit. If you go on my TikTok page, you'll find it. Um, okay. And 
and it has island in the background kind of what we're starting to do it's a demo it's not the final recording it's probably going to change a little bit but it'll give you an idea of what we're doing but you know i got that chris cornell vocals going on and the acoustic guitar going on jerry's playing some fucking lamb of god riff over top of it um wow the drums are like some tribal african war drum thing i came up with and then this is under sean wall tiktok yeah yeah man it's like okay, a, okay. It's i'm a, gonna check it out for sure and then um i, I added it all together because i do all that shit too right so um but anyway um so we we put he put that together and then he brought this other riff to us that's tentatively called the narcissist um okay. i i got in every morning i wake up and my wife gets on her exercise bike and i drink my coffee sitting on the couch and unfortunately with i get to watch the real housewives of wherever the fuck and, and you're so, exercising through her <laughs> no, no I, i'm right. exercising by drinking a coffee and realizing yeah, exactly. that i have to deal with this shit now so, yeah, yeah, no, yeah she's on the bike i'm not exercising no fuck yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so after watching the real housewives of all sorts of places i got a lot of inspiration to write a song called narcissist and then jer brought me a riff so that's the the second one that's kind of in the works right now and then matt's got a whole bunch of shit, and we're thinking about maybe rehashing decay which is on my spotify if you take a look there um but yeah just like we're it's a combination of covers because that's what we started out doing and then Matt right. came into the fold just out of the blue. He like sent me a message. Hey man, thought maybe uh you know maybe if you wanted to do something musically, we might be able to do something. And me and Matt had known of each other for I don't know ten ten years easy, and right. knew people within the same circles. And then we had talked occasionally, and I promoted his like California kilowatt stuff because it was kind of cool. I liked it, and then. Right that all kind of didn't happen but he reached out to me and you know he came into the fold and we've been like just jiving everything's been super smooth and we've got like elements of like post hardcore and metal and pop and grunge and we're just mixing it all together so it's going to be Did you contact day. my boy? Did you contact my boy Dr. Lang or Matt Lang or whatever his name was? Um I can drummer I, I contacted a bunch of people, man. We probably talked to about 15 different drummers at this point, and we've had two come out. So Okay, well, that guy's incredible. Cool. He lives in Peterborough, and I gave him the heads up on you, and I said, like, hey, man, you're, you're a really good I, – I have a singer that's incredible, and I know you're good too, and you guys should fucking hook up, but I guess you guys never never worked out, but it's okay. Yeah, people get busy, right? Like we we have like a commitment thing with like with doing it. So if the commitment's not there or they don't think that they commit, we don't want to pressure them into it. We don't want to have anyone there because they feel like they need to be there. We want them to be there because they want to be there. So if it what's the jive, commitment? Jive, you know what's what's the commitment? Like, do you, how often do you guys jam? We jam once a week for about four hours, but when we jam, it's rehearsal. It's not practice. So when you're we're coming there, we're coming there to to rehearse what what we're sounding like on the stage. We're not there to practice the songs and learn stuff. We're we're supposed to put that time in during the week. Come there. That's fair. Yeah, That's like fair. you don't you don't go hop on stage at Urban or at the Atria or any number of the other places that we've played in in you know years and years and practice. You get up there and you put on a show. So if we're coming yeah. together and we're professional musicians, we need to come together and like the wireless systems running here. We've got a full wireless for the guitars and the bass. Like nice, we, nice. You know, we have in ears coming. We're not messing around. Like full-fledged we're video recording all of our our harbor jams now uh from two different angles just so we have the idea of what we look like if we're doing anything stupid if there's a spot where we're fucking up then we can see if there's something that we can visibly see that's like suggesting that one of the like we're we're taking it serious it's a, it's a job and if you're gonna do it right so 
That's sick, dude. That's sick. Like, you're got. Do you guys are gonna reap those rewards when you guys play a show? People are gonna see that you're polished, right? Like, you're you're you know, it 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 will be a performance if you're practicing that way. It will be. It, it's gonna be awesome, man. I can't wait to fucking do a show with you guys. Well, awesome. I can't wait to do a show with you guys. I, I watched a bunch of the stuff on the on CTV when you guys were, were on there, and it was awesome. And then Thanks, I man. did all of these uh, all of these things where you're doing soundtracks for fucking horror films and shit, and I'm just like, <laughs> like, I'm just like dude's living the life, and just fucking playing with with sound and having a fucking blast doing it. Like, yeah, because I, I work full time, right? So I work full time, but the pandemic kind of, I was sent home and I got caught in a kind of like a tailspin. I kind of thought to myself, you know, if you want to get your your music out there, mm -hmm. um, this is kind of the time to do it. Everybody's in front of their computer. So, I mean, the projection I got was uh, before the pandemic, you know, if you, you know, message 100 let's say music supervisors three three percent so three out of the hundred will get back to you and nothing will come of it right but with well, this pandemic to, going on you have to message a thousand three percent yeah. will get back to you and one of those guys will say yes but they fucking run a radio station in alaska yeah so yeah. they're also <laughs> tiny Tim right now so they'll play it right after tiny tim and right before neil sadaka but yeah exactly here, right like no i know that's true that's true yeah but uh true. like so 20 guys out of 100 would got back to me during the pandemic and three of them paid me oh my god right oh, so, yeah. so that was the kind of the projection with this pandemic so i mean it was cool and i and i now i'm working with this guy called jason hawkins who's out of the pacific north northwest like oregon fucking portland area yeah. and he's a horror director and so now i can kind of like use his visuals and associate my music with visuals now right so that was the benefit of working with him just to kind of like evolve into right. something visually as well and so that's what I took from it, and I felt like I could, you know, that I could, you know, I got published, and I, you know, I feel like I could have maybe ran after millions, but I mean, I I had a str strong feeling that I would have had to have sacrificed my family, and I wasn't ready to do that. Yeah, exactly. Like that Oliver Anthony guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, I mean, he could fucking go get nine fucking transport trucks and sing his songs all over the place, or he can fucking take his forty thousand dollars a day for the next three or four weeks while he's getting it and then just fucking sit on it right and yeah exactly it. yeah no i get it no I so i mean i'm just yeah I work, I work i'm just trying to be happy what yeah wow yeah Yeah, we're we're all we're all indie kind of musicians, but I think that like you're a special indie musician to me because I haven't heard people that can sing like you, right? Like you're you're awesome. So I mean, people should really check you out, and you're as good as kind of anybody out there on the radio, you know. So I mean, fuck, it's pretty awesome, dude. Um, and you know, I want to do more shows with you, but I don't know, like. Yeah, I do want to do more shows like in Peterborough and maybe uh, Oshawa, but I can't do many shows every year right now unless there's a budget behind it because we got families and we got a whole bunch of shit. Like la last year, we did 12 shows, I think. Yeah. This year, we might yeah. do like eight shows, right? Like. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. When it comes when it comes right down to it, like I'm not I'm not out there. Like, don't get me wrong, I want to be on the stage, I want to have fun, and I want to play. But if I want to just go out and jam at a fucking song or something and go out and play three or four songs, there's like fucking 20 open stages here in Peterborough. I can go sit on anybody's stage, play three songs, and go to fuck home. But if I'm going to play, <laughs> yeah. the whole idea behind it is like proper promotion. So you're right, there yeah. is groundwork here because, yeah, I work the day job, 
But I also got a 16 year old who fucking wants to do whatever he can to hang out with me. So if it means that he's out there and we're postering together and we're fucking handing out flyers for fucking two weeks, a couple times, you know, throughout the week, just to get the name out there and get the, the posters in fucking people's windows. Like we used to do back in the day and it doesn't happen anymore. Like the groundwork doesn't go in and then people bitch that no one shows up to the show. It's like, what fucking show? The poster that's on the bar that replaced the same poster last week and played like fucking put it put it in the goddamn Charlotte Jewelers like fucking put it somewhere that people are gonna go, what the fuck is that? And look at it. But so yeah, so like, Sean, this my, just it. sorry to interrupt, but my boy Ace is on the line here too. Ace. Are you there? Okay, Ace is sleeping. But yeah, there is a guy there's a kind of a co host. He was just sitting back, but I wanted to introduce you, but I guess he's fucking sleeping or something. So <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> Where where did Ace go? I, well anyway, I just wanted to tell Ace, like we like when we would show up at the, the Montreal house, the place would be fucking packed and you know, that would be you. Yeah. Right, okay. doing all that, doing all that fucking legwork, right? And it was, it was a cool response from the people because they actually did like that music. They weren't just going there for, just because I guess that was the place to be. They were going there for, for like to hear good music, right? And we're kind of like, we're just throwing cool shows. So I want to do that again. But it's well. creating a scene, right? It's like yeah, it yeah, yeah. Fatal Assembly show because they knew that we were gonna kick ass. And we were going to play fucking 20 songs. And they probably knew eight of them from the radio that we were going to play heavier than the bands that play them on the radio. And then we had our own shit that they loved and bought the CDs for. And then, but they also knew that because we didn't suck, the other bands yeah. we brought in weren't going to suck. And, and they knew what fans they were because they saw the fucking poster sport two months before the show. Right? Like the, Sean, let's yeah. lock it in. Saturday, June twenty second. We're gonna get. We're gonna set something up in the next. I'm gonna say, no later than a week. I'm gonna send you Belinda's contact information, bud, and I'm gonna email her. Robin will get Robin to email her, and if you can co go by in person, that'd be fucking sick, dude. Oh, I will. I will. Well, and, and and honestly, I mean, we have the potential to be doing a show potentially at the end of April with birdie um pending some some stuff that has nothing to do with us it's all on the other end and we we're just like if we get to play it cool but otherwise june 22nd will essentially be like stage birth for this farewell radio well hey if uh if you guys do play the atria with uh, birdie let me know because birdie like we're we're kind of like i mean penciled in for that show as well but we yeah. got the horseshoe on may 4th so i mean when you play the horseshoe they don't want you fucking doing anything right so it's like i i told birdie i'm like we can't we can't pr promote that and uh robin's like you know what I'm, i'll put you down but you know i'm on the fence with that show right now so i just gotta see what's happening because there's guelph might want us to do something for this thing called uh they have like a game i don't know we're just trying to play different places as well you know no i get that man like that's kind of the yeah. way that we're at. Like at this point, like if we're going to do a show, the idea is to fucking fill the place to begin with. Like yeah, whether it's a fucking 200 place, like the Montreal house was or 300 place, yeah. like the red dog was or fucking, is that place gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's for now. Huh. Anyway, we'll see what happens to the building. But yeah, it's at, at Montreal it's, house. What is it? A gas station or some shit now? No, the Montreal house, man, it's a smokehouse. So it's uh, oh, okay. like the fucking down there. They have a little bit of live music from time to time, but it's, uh, yeah. it's Dr. J's. So it's like a roadhouse, smokehouse. Like they got smokers out in the parking lot where we used to smoke cigarettes and shit. They're all yeah. <laughs> back when we still nice. smoked like <laughs> Oh my yeah. God. But yeah, like that, that's what that place is now. And then right beside it is the the new um, uh, hockey outside like skating rink that people like to smash signs at. So, oh, uh, awesome! Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they're making downtown nice. I think. Um, <laughs> well, who's your favorite singer? Honestly, yeah. Well, I mean, Chris Cornell. 
would be okay, like, that's mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your second favorite singer? Um, <laughs> I got like a top five that that I let me hear it. Let me hear your top five. Okay, so we got Cornell, and then yeah. in no particular order, and this is going to blow minds, I'm sure. Uh, Don uh -huh. Henry from the Eagles, Sammy Hagar from Van Halen, and obviously Hagar. Um, fucking Garth Brooks, right? And, and Johnny Cash. That's that's an interesting five. I like it, but uh, I'm I'm gonna say for me, it's kind of like all those. You know, Chris Cornell would be number one. Eddie Vedder would probably be number two. Scott Weiland would be number three. I'd go fuck Lane Staley number four. There's lots of number fives because uh, there's so many great singers, right? I mean, Freddie Mercury is an amazing singer, you know. Robert Plant's an amazing singer. Like, Fuck, like, there's so like, many guys. Number one front man all time is Freddie Mercury. He's more yeah, that guy's amazing. Singer. Yeah, but he's more yeah. than a singer. He commands audiences. I would never pick him as just a singer. The guy plays piano. The guy fucking writes music. He orchestrated music. He's and runs around and does somersaults and shit. He fucking <laughs> like the dude was just the dude was insane. He was so much more than just a singer. Like that guy was crazy. Sean, thank you so much for doing this show. Sean Walt, uh, his new band is Farewell Radio. We're going to be doing a show June twenty second, Saturday. We're working out the kinks now. Um, yeah. I'll send you all that uh, that stuff. Do you want? Do you have anything to promote right now? Um, yeah, go listen to my new song, Decay, on Spotify or YouTube or whatever you want to call it, but it's Decay. Please do so. You have my full uh, backing. This guy's fucking amazing. You got to check him out live. I mean, Sean, if we do a show, you, me, and Robin, those, those are three power fucking singers right there, dude. So, I mean... That's going to be a cool fucking gig. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing with that. Like, I have a big age difference in my band, too, right? Like, you know, members come and go, but I'm still with my brother-in-law, Ian. And that guy's, like, 40, going to be 44 this year. I'm going to be 42 this year. But my guitarist is 30, going to yep. be 31 this year. And then my drummer is, like, 25 or something like that, right? So, he, we, like, we're all... We're just kind of we and we jam and we have fun and then we like we'll we'll book a show every other month, right? And that's kind of the way we're doing it, and yeah. it, it's working for all of us. And like everybody has their own lives, and you know my drummer plays in a few bands, and he's like very active and he goes to school for drumming and the whole thing. And same with my guitarist. And like we have a good band right now, so I'm uh, I'm I'm excited uh, to play the shows that I that I, that I'm playing. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm doing it to have a good time. Um, I don't need really somebody saying that I'm a fucking badass. That's really not why I'm playing shows. But, I mean, that energy transfer feels nice. Um, and I feel fortunate that I, that we get to play shows because it's not easy to do. And you know full well, bro, you've been in this fucking game for a long time. You know it's not easy to play a show because just to get on stage and, and get along. Yeah. No, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, just just to get on stage. Like we were actually talking about this jam yesterday, and uh, and I want to cut in and digress too much, but the drummer who's yeah. thirty literally says yeah. like, because he's got long hair, he's got tats, like he looks the part, right? Whereas yep. I'm forty five years old, I don't have long yeah. hair anymore. I shave my head because I don't give a fuck. I've got a big yeah. fuck off goatee beard because I don't give a fuck. And yeah. he says to me, it must be nice to be in a position where you're like, you, you just don't give a fuck anymore. And I'm like, well, yeah, but it generally comes from like shit. But he's like, but you can just like not care about what everyone thinks. And I said, well, but a long time ago, someone was said to me, well, man, you suck. And I, I literally, I pulled the microphone out of my mic stand and I literally handed it to the drummer or tried to hand it to the drummer. And I said, you do better. Yeah. I mean, you got it at the end of the day, man, it comes, it comes down to like loving yourself. Yeah. You okay. Have to. Fuck. So if you don't, if you don't love yourself, you're chasing something that you're never going to get fulfilled for. So if you're, if you're trying to look a certain way and do something, it's like, you're not seeing that jewel that kind of 
God or the universe gave you when you were it, you became part of this world, right? And once you find that, you become a lot more content with fucking the way shit is, right? Um, and you you really become more aware of all of the miracles that are happening every fucking second of the day, right? But we get caught up in in thinking about like you know what's gonna happen tomorrow or what already happened, and you kind of base your whole life around all those fucking traumas that you went through as a fucking child, and now and you're chasing, am I good? Am I gonna be good enough? I have to be good enough. I have to prove uh, that I'm good enough. Now those traumas make michael jordan who he is and make these great singers and entertainers who they are but that's just a part of it they really need to to love themselves because at the end of the day chris cornell my hero has fucking killed himself fucking scott wyland who i saw four months before he died killed himself lane staley fucking killed himself i mean all of these people have fucking massive amounts of fucking trauma that they need to numb with drugs and a whole bunch of shit and it just transgresses into them fucking blowing their fucking brains out. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know it's it, it, like it, it's super sad that people just can't accept the fact that you are a product of your experiences, and the fact that you're still here, still breathing on this side of the dirt, is in itself an accomplishment. It's not a participation yeah. trophy. Life's fucking hard, and every day it gets harder, and it gets harder for the new generations, and the older generations don't fucking seem to understand that. And a small, finite little, finite little amount of the older generation wants to tell everyone else how to live because they're not having a problem with how they live because they have all the resources, and they're not willing to share them. But they're also not willing to die. So at this point, like, yeah, like just accept the fact that life's hard. Love yourself, move forward yeah. and be happy that every day you get to wake up and see the fucking sunrise and the bombs aren't dropping in your house. You don't have to worry about stepping in a fucking landmine when you're walking to school. You have a fucking bus to take you there. Like, fuck. Just be the best person you can be for the world. Be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there he is. There he is. Hey, hey <laughs> this is my buddy Sean. Holy fuck, man. What the fuck <laughs> happened to you? Were you sleeping? I couldn't hear it. <laughs> Son of a bitch, bro. How many fucking podcasts have you been doing now, dude? I sent you the fucking leave your phone on fucking... What did you... You fall asleep and your phone went black? It went black, bro. Oh. <laughs> oh All right, Sean. Thank you so much, okay? You're very welcome, man. Thank you for having me on, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, no problem. Cheers, buddy. Right, Take buddy. care. This is the Monster Closet episode 19 with Sean Walt. Check him out. He's, his new band's Farewell Radio. Uh, he gave you all the stuff you needed to check out. I think we're all done, packed up, ready to go. June 22nd will be the show. Frailfragment.com. Uh, the Monster Closet's on Spotify. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey. Frail Fragments, Monster Classics.